packets. I won't show you right now. You don't need to write down, but I think it's important to uh, discuss. Um, I've been telling you that I don't like uh, giving you a fact and not having uh, supporting evidence of why that fact is true. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to address here with you um, first. And the fact actually I gave to you when I first introduced this chapter um, with the negative exponent stuff, where we have a negative exponent in the numerator, we're going to rewrite it so that that term shows up in the denominator, right? Okay. You all right? You need to go get it? I think so. Go get it. Um, so what, what I want to talk about here is like a to the negative n, okay? And I'm going to put this over 1 just so we can see it as a fraction. The first thing I told you on Monday or yeah, it would have been Tuesday was that it's going to turn into that, right? a to the negative n turns into 1 over a to the n. And I said, that's a fact. You just have to accept that right now, okay? But now let's kind of talk about why. Okay, um, and we're going to we're going to uh, try to establish a pattern here. So somebody give me a number. Four. I heard five. Yep. Four. All right, let's go with five. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say five, and we'll raise it to the fourth power. Okay, um, and I'm going to kind of show a pattern here, hopefully. Like what if, I, if I raise it to like the nth power, what that means is n could be any number that I want it to be. And let's just say n is bigger than 5 right now. So I would like, let's say n was like uh, 30. I have 5 to the 30th. And then I'm going to show what 5 to the 29th is, 5 to the 28th, 5 to the 27th. And eventually I get down to 5 to the 4th. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's just say we start at 5 to the nth, whatever n is. Could be 100, could be a million, could be a biggest number we think about. But eventually we'll get down to 5 to the 4th, and I keep decreasing that n by 1. Um, so uh, maybe sometimes what you'll see is it kind of written this way. The first term is 5 to the n, and that means that that is 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, now I'm going to put these. You guys know what those three dots are called in English class? Okay, it means it continue, that pattern continues. And in English, they're called ellipses, right? Okay, so I'm calling those ellipses, uh, and I'm going to put 5, and this is usually the way that we denote this, is that 5 to the n means I'm taking 5, and I'm multiplying it by itself n times, right? That make sense? Well, eventually, that n is going to come down to, so the next one would be uh, like 5 to the n minus 1 would be 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 but it's going to be n minus 1 times. So if this was 30 times, this would be 29 times. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. The pattern eventually will get down to like 5 to the 4th. Well, 5 to the 4th means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Does anybody know what that number is? 5 to the 4th. 5 times 5 is what? 25. What's, one, what's 25 times 5 then? 125. What's 125 times 5? 625. Okay. So 5 to the 4th becomes 625. Okay. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Now, let's write what 5 to the 3rd is. 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. Okay. 5 to the 2nd. 5 times 5, which would be 25. And then 5 to the first would just be 5, okay? Um, I'm going to write something here. Well, let's do this. What, what could I take 625 by? What could I divide it by to get 125? Divided by 5, right? If I started, so this one was 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5, if I take 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 and divide it by 5, 
Those fives cancel out, right? And it leaves me just three fives to multiply together, so you get 1.5. We're going to take 1.5 and divide it by, do you get 25? Five, right? Do we see that that is, you know, if I started with five times five times five, now I'm divided by five times five, so those four cancel out, and now I'm left with just five times five, right? But again, I just divided by five from the previous term. What do I divide 25 by to get 5? 5. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. I've now divided that. So starting with 625, I've now divided it five, or sorry, by 5 three times. So those cancel, leaving me just 5, right? If I asked you what 5 to the 0 was, what do we know anything raised to the 0 is? 1. 1. Does it make sense that if I continue the pattern dividing by 5, Divided by 5. What's 5 divided by 5? 1. Okay. And visually, what we're saying is that if I would have, if I would have started with, you know, 5 to the 4th and then divided by that, isn't that the same thing divided by itself? Don't they all cancel out? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so hopefully that, that maybe is a, a validation of why if anything in this case, especially 5, raised to the 0 is 1. But what would, look at your pattern of your exponents here. They started at 4, went to 3, went to 2, went to 1, went to 0. If I write 5, what would be the next one? Negative 1, right? Now, if I was at 1 and I want to continue this pattern, what am I going to divide 1 by? You divided each one of these by 5, right? So what would make that pattern change? Do you think anything is, have we done anything that would make that pattern change? No. no. So let's continue to divide by 5. So what's 1 divided by 5? 5. It's 0. 0.2 is a decimal, but is it that as a fraction? Okay. Uh, is this an exponent right here of 1? For that 5? Does that make sense to everybody? So what we've got going, if I go back to this idea of, of, of showing these 5s, so we started with 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and now I'm dividing it by 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 1 more 5, don't these 5s cancel out? It leaves me a 1 on the top and a 5 on the bottom, just like that. Okay, let's go 5 to the negative second. Well, that means I'm going to divide this one-fifth by five again. Does that make sense? Well, algebraically, one-five, or one-fifth, divided by five looks like that. And the way we do that is we multiply by that reciprocal. Dividing by a whole number, or dividing by anything, is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Well, doesn't that mean I get one over five times five, which is the same thing as one over five squared? Does that make sense? And that might be a little bit more obvious, that if I have 5 to the negative second power, that's the same thing as 1 over 5 squared. Is that the same rule that we established when I said a to the negative nth over 1 is equal to 1 over a to the nth? Does that make sense? Where in this case, this particular case, my a value is 5, and the n value for that situation is 2. It turns into 1 over five to the second. Does that make sense to everybody? So I want to make sure that you understand that this isn't something we just made up. Rules in mathematics are not made up. There's a, there are some that, like, there are some definitions with numbers that we use in mathematics. You'll see one in Algebra 2 that was invented, that was made up, okay? This, because of how our number system works, is a byproduct of basically how we count things and how we do division. Does that make sense? So this rule that I told you at the beginning of 7-1, there's reason behind it, okay? And this stuff here that we just did is, in my opinion, the, the real algebra, okay? Because if we understand that, then it doesn't matter what the 5 is, and it doesn't matter what the n value is. We should be able to do it to anything. I can do it with 7. I can do it with 8. I can do it with whatever. I can do it with A, okay? Um, if we can understand that, then there shouldn't be any problem that we come across with negative exponents that we can't address. We can't simplify. Okay? Does that make sense?
Okay. Um, when we get to, our, I think this is page four, uh, I want to start talking about scientific notation. Okay. There, there's a couple things. So this isn't really, uh, I kind of insert this in here. There's not going to be a whole lot of questions in tonight's homework, which isn't going to be due tomorrow or I guess Monday. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more time on this because there's just some other things that need to go into this uh, before we can actually assess or assign that assignment or, or make that assignment due, I guess. Um, scientific notation is one of those things that you've seen in the past. I want to talk about it because there's going to be in the next several chapters, every once in a while, a problem pop up that expresses a number in scientific notation. And if you don't remember scientific notation or maybe you struggle with it when you first learned it, um, those questions are going to create a problem for you, right? Uh, and, of course, exam usually has one or two questions in it that uh, they provide a number in scientific notation for us, okay? Um, now, the math community, the science community, uh, they have come to terms, come to agreement that there's a particular format for scientific notation, okay? Scientific notation is a... It's a quick way to write a very, 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 very large number or a very, 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 very small number, okay? Um, so we're talking about things that are really, really, really close to zero, okay? Or things that are really, 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 really far away from zero, okay? That's, that's the idea here. Um, and what it does for us primarily is if I were to ask you this question here, I would ask you to take like point zero 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 four two and multiply it by one four three two five seven. Actually, let's not do it that way. Let's go one four just to make it a little bit easier right now. Zero 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 zero. If I ask you to multiply those two things, you guys, you guys remember doing that much that long multiplication in like third grade. Okay, where you have to take and multiply by the zero, that, that last zero, multiply by everything up top, write down those products, carry any numbers that you need to, then put a placeholder in my second line of a zero, multiply by the second zero up there, all the way through the top, write everything down. Remember doing it, and then you add all your, all your lines of products together, right? Okay, well, that's messy and it's hard, it's a pain in the butt. Okay, this process is going to allow us to ultimately get to the point that will allow us basically to multiply just those two numbers. And if I know what the product of those two numbers are, I should be able to figure out the product of the red numbers. Does that make sense? So that's science. Scientific notation is a, is a devised way to do very, 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 very large and very, 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 very small calculations with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division more efficiently, okay? Um, in doing that, we have to agree on what scientific notation is. They are going to, our textbook discusses that scientific notation, okay, is of that form where we have A, which is going to be um, some integer, and there's some uh, number between 1 and 10, any real numbers, that's what we're looking for, any real number between 1 and 10, it can be 1 and it can be 10, but if they are 1 and they are 10, they're kind of trivial. There's, there's better ways of writing those numbers. Um, so we're usually looking at like numbers like 8.3 or 4.12 or 7.1. Does that kind of make sense? Those are numbers that are between 1 and 10. So our number up front is going to be that type of value, okay? You're going to then have times 10. And the, the exponent of your 10 is going to be a integer, okay? So it could be positive or it could be negative, but it's going to be a whole number. It's not going to be a decimal or fraction or anything like that, okay? So these are scientific notation examples here. Each one of these, this would be the A value. It's between 1 and 10. There's my A value. It's between 1 and 10. There's my A value. It's between 1 and 10. And then all my exponents here are integers. Okay, so that abides by scientific notation. Um, so what does 8.3 times 10 to, the meet, 10 to the fifth really mean to us? Okay, well, think about this. This means 8.3 
times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Does that make sense to everybody? That's 10 to the fifth, right? Well, when I have 10 to the fifth, okay, I'll just take 8.3 and multiply it by 10 one time. What's that going to do to your decimal place? It's going to move it to the right one place, right? So multiplying by 10, because our, our, multiplicate, or sorry, our number system is base 10, okay, thus multiplying by 10 is going to get my decimal place to move to different place values, okay? So this multiplication here would give me 83. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I rewrote that as 83, I would then have um, 83 times 10. Well, if I multiply 83 times 10, what's that turn into? 830. So then I have 830 times 10. Well, it's 830 times 10. 8,300. So hopefully you guys kind of get the game here they're playing. Multiply 8,300 by 10 and you get... Okay. Is that right? Okay. And then multiply by 10 again. Okay. So you get that number. So that is what 8.3 times 10 to the fifth means. But if we think about what that to the fifth did, okay, multiply basically by multiplying each individual 10, it moved the decimal place one spot. So it's a fifth, it's actually going to take this decimal place here. And move it how many spots that way? Five times. Five times. So I started it right there with my finger is. I went to the one, to two, to three, to four, to five spots. And now my decimal place rests there. And that is what that number is written as. Does that make sense? So that is the, that is the shortened way. That is the, we call this the standard notation. This is scientific notation. Yeah, you've done this before. Okay. But I want to make sure we understand this. And, we, and there's, a, there's some algebra here that maybe you haven't done or you did but didn't understand why you're doing it or what was working. So there's some stuff here eventually uh, that will be completely new to you, okay? What about this? What if I wrote this as point eight three times 10 to the sixth? Now, that's not scientific notation because this number has to be bigger than one. Does that make sense? But that's still a number. Okay, is that number right there, 0.83 times 10 to 6, the same thing as the number above it? How many, how many decimal places would I have to move that, that decimal if I'm looking at times 10 to the 6? Six? six times, which direction? To the right. So if I move that decimal six things to the right, does it give me 8, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0? Is that the same number as what this was? Okay. The reason I'm showing this is because in this situation, so these two numbers, let's, uh, let me group these in yellow. Those two numbers there produce the same exact amount, right? So what I've highlighted there are the same, okay? But what happened on the left hand with that 8.3 and the 0.83, I moved this decimal to the left one spot, right, to get this one. As I move that decimal to the left, what happened to that exponent? It went up by one, right? Does that make sense? If I would move this to the right and make it 83, 83 times 10 to the whatever, I move it to the right, Right, it's 83 times 10. What would actually happen to that, that power of 5? You have to go down to 4, right? So 83 times 10 to the 4th, or 8.3 times 10 to the 5th, or 0.83 times 10 to the 6th, they all say the same 830,000 number. Okay? We just, by wanting to have everybody on the same page of what a scientific notation is, we prefer the 8.3 times 10 to the fifth. But we should still be able to do the work with the other one. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if I look at this one here, okay, 
Anybody remember from previous years what that negative tells you to do? You're going to move left. Okay. So I'm going to go 0 0.00007. That would be moving it from there to there. Five spots, right? And then I have my... Okay. So all these following ones, so let's uh, answer this with a yes or a no. And if it's a no, let's fix them. Okay. So is this one here, this first one, is that scientific notation? No. And the reason is because that number right there is less than one. So we, we got to fix that. So I need to move that decimal one spot to the right, correct? So put my decimal at 2.3. Now it's going to be times 10. Well, we moved it to the right, like we did up here in the yellow. It should be to the fourth then, right? Okay. And remember, how, how can I judge and make sure I've done that right? Well, write down what 0.23 times 10 fifth means. 0.23. 0.23 times 10 to the fifth should be. Two, three, so now my decimal place is like right there, and that moved it two so far from what it started with, right? And then to get to the five decimal places, you move it three more. Does that make sense, everybody? So when I rewrite in actual scientific notation, I need to make sure that it still produces that number. So if my decimal place is there, how many spots do I have to move it to where it becomes right there? I have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, so that becomes 2.3 times 10 to the 4th, okay? So you got kind of two routes there. If you're going to just, if you're not going to turn it into standard notation and then put it back into scientific notation like we just did, you can just look at this and say, well, if I move my decimal to the right, that's going to decrease my exponent. If I move my decimal place to the left, it will increase my decimal point. Does that make sense? Okay, and those might be, might be a little notes that you want to write down to kind of help you uh, as you start working on multiple questions that, that ask you to do this, okay? Uh, what about the next one? Is the next one scientific notation? Yes, okay? That number is between 1 and 10, and that integer is uh, my exponent, so that's okay. What about the next one? 9.3 times 100 to the ninth? No, okay? Now, 9.3 is okay, right? But that's not okay. What is, so 100 to the ninth, what is that 100 supposed to be? 10. Okay. So I got 100 to the ninth, which looks like that, but it's supposed to be a 10. Well, what is 100 with an exponent? So, uh, so what can I write 10 with an exponent so it's equal to 100? 2. So 10 squared would actually be this 100. Does that make sense? So those two numbers, those two representations say the same thing. They okay with everybody? Okay. Let's, let's kind of work at this first. What's 10 squared mean? It means 100. But before you multiply it out, it means 10 times 10, right? So let's do this. 10 times 10 raised to the ninth. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, if I've got something in parentheses here raised to the ninth, it, doesn't that 9 mean that I've got that 10 times 10 written out 9 times? Okay, so let's do that. That's going to be a pain in the butt for me to write, but it means 10 times 10. There's one time. There's two times. There's three times. I'm going to cheat. Well, that was supposed to be quicker. So that would be six times, right? And let's multiply one more time. So I know there's some stuff overlapping here. But that would be 10 times 10 written out nine times, right? How many 
times are you multiplying 10 by itself in that situation right there? If I, can, if I counted all those 10s in that last row, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, there's 18 of those 10s. Okay? So, when we say 100 to the ninth, 100 to the ninth, that is the same thing as 10 to the 18th. Now, what we'll learn eventually is that there's a quick way to get that 18. If I highlight those two numbers, do you see the quick way to get that 18? Nine times two. I, I, I essentially multiply those two exponents, and that'll be a rule that we learn later in the week, uh, I guess early next week. So this would be 9.3. We just said 100 to the ninth is the same thing as 10 to the 18th. Okay. So that number, let's just kind of talk about like 10 to the 18th. So that would be, can I keep track for me real quick with this? That'd be, so you're going to have ultimately three zeros. So that would be 1,000. You have three more zeros. Let me make, make, make sense more to, to write this. Anything raised to the 18th power. We should be able to, so, so something raised to the 6th power is a million, right? Does that make sense because of the decimal places? So let's kind of talk about what this number would be. Um, so we're going to have 9.3 raised to the 18th. So I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay? So there's my thousands, right? There's a million. There's a billion. Is that okay with everybody? So then trillion, quadrillion, and we call that quintillion. Okay? Uh, the next one is uh, sextillion, and then it's septillion, and then an octillion. Um, I want to say nonillion, but I'm not sure if that's nine, right? That's right. That's funny, that works in a couple of years. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty big, right? That's substantial. Um, but think about this. This is, so that was quadrillion. So right there, and it's probably right there. That's the decimal place for like the national debt, okay? Um, which think about this, and it, I think it's important to kind of talk about these types of things to have a little bit of number sense. You guys know what the difference between one million and one billion is? Okay, so it's a thousand, and it, it basically one, a thousand million is a billion, right? Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. Um, if you were able to say one number every second, one number, and now this is, this is unrealistic because when I get out to like 983,451, that took more than a second to say, right? If I ask, let's say every number I ever say takes only one second. If you're able to do that and count to a million, does anybody know how long that would take you to do? A million seconds. It would take you a million seconds, okay. So it would take me a million seconds. So let's see how long a million seconds is if, well, let's talk about a million seconds. So one million seconds, so we'll just do this real quick. And we want to change this into, let's put it into days. Okay. How many seconds are in a minute? Okay. So now seconds would go away and I'd be left with minutes, right? So let's say minutes to hours. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60 minutes and one out. Okay. So the minutes would go away, right? How many hours in a day? Okay. So 24 one. So let's take one million. I'll use Desmos, it's a little bit easier. Yes. So what we just wrote, we're taking one million. So one, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. And we're going to multiply that by one over 60 times then one over 60 times then 1 over 24. So it gives me that. And what's that number in? Days. 
correct? So if you were to, if you were able to count, so counting to a million would at least take you 11 and a half days. Does that make sense? And it's probably going to take substantially more because some of those numbers are going to take longer than a second for you to speak or to say. Okay? Let's talk about a billion. Okay? How many, how many, how many millions are in one billion? A thousand. Okay? So if I ask you to count to a billion, okay, I would take that 11 days and multiply it by a thousand, right? So let's take this number. What should you call that number? A. And I'll multiply A by a thousand. And it gives me that number right there. So that's the number of days that it would take. It's the number of days it would take to count to a billion. Does that make sense? Okay, so how many days are in a year? Okay, so like a, like a traditional, like a, so it's 365.25 because of, uh, of uh, like leaf year and all that kind of stuff, right? Rotation of the sun, all that good stuff. Got a rotation of us around the sun. So let's just take that number B and divide it by 365.25. Takes you 31.68 years to count to a billion, saying one, one, one word for every second. So none of you are are a billion years old, right? No. Most of you aren't even 500 million seconds old. Does that make sense? Okay, because 500 million would be what 15 and a half? Does that make sense? 15 and a half years? Anybody 15? 15 and a half? 16? Okay, so, 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 so some of you guys are getting to the precipice of 500 million or half a billion. Okay? Uh, but not, I'm the only one in here that's a, at least a billion year, seconds old, not years. Um, so think about somebody that's a millionaire. So if, if you guys, anybody watching like, the presidential debates with the, like, the primaries for the, the Democrats or whatever? Um, so they're, they're talking about, like, so... And, and it's all hypocrisy because it's crazy. Cause, so Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, these guys, they're all millionaires. Okay? Now, Pete Buttigieg might not be a millionaire, but uh, he's got some money. Okay? But these people are all millionaires. Like, Bernie Sanders wants to kind of introduce socialism to the United States. You know, you got aspects of socialism, but he wants it full-fledged socialism. And so what I'll explain it in, in a minute. It basically means that you work and then you give your money to the government, and the government then disperses your money to everybody else. Oh, no. Okay? Um, so, so what happens is it basically says you work, you know, your 40 hours, okay, um, and your money is going to get taken from the government, and then they're going to divide that money up and give it to everybody, okay? So your money is going to pay some people that don't work. Okay? That ain't right, right? Okay? So, um, these dudes are all billion, are millionaires, and now they're attacking, you guys know who Mike Bloomberg is. Yeah. So he's the billionaire, okay? So he, and he, he, he's like not just a billionaire, he's a multi-billionaire, okay? So they're attacking him because, like, he's trying to buy the president's, uh, that, that seat. He's trying to, to buy the presidency because he's already spent more money on campaigning than what these people are all worth combined. He's spent, like, $416 million on campaigning. And these people's net worth isn't even that combined. Um, but it's just a drop in the hat for them. It would be like you guys going out and spending, I don't know if you got, yeah, like it's just, it's, it's nothing to them. Um, because of how big a million is compared to a billion. Does that make sense? Um, so, it's, it's, so when people say millionaire and billionaire, oh yeah, they're rich, obviously. They're all like maybe better off than all of us, but a billionaire is, is kind of ridiculous. Okay. Um, which then, Think about the national debt. The national debt is in trillions. So that's a thousand billions. Okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, but so talking with these really large numbers, right, it's kind of hard. Okay? So what we like to do is discuss them as smaller numbers in scientific notation. Okay? Uh, so instead of talking about, like, you know, what do we have up here? Let's say... Instead of talking about, where'd that number go? 
that number right there, I think we said that was about nine quadrillion um, three hundred um, trillion. Okay, would be that number. Instead of talking about that, it's better to say nine point three times ten to the eighteenth. Okay, uh, and then I don't have to worry about whether it's the quadrillions or the billions or the whatever. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Trillionaires? No. Um, so, like, the wealthiest guy is Jeff Bezos. We talked about him the other day, didn't we? No, that was another class. He's the Amazon guy, right? And he's worth, like, $110 billion or something like that, $120 billion. But now he's only worth, like, half that because his wife and him got a divorce and she got half of it. Okay. Um, so, he just built a – now, think about this. He just built a home that is worth $165 million. Okay. It's crazy, right? But for him, he's got 110, 120 billion. Doesn't really matter. He just devoted 10 billion to um, like climate change. Okay. Um, okay. So let's let's work a little bit in the, in the remaining time to to change these numbers into scientific notation. And this is probably what you guys have spent most of the time in the past working with. And all of these numbers right here, the decimal place, if it's not written, shows up at the end, right? How many decimal places do I need to move so that that decimal stops between the one and the four? You need to move it nine. So you would write this number as 1.43 times 10 to the ninth, okay? Now, as we work through this stuff, because the way we multiply and the notation we use to multiply can be different, you might see it written this way, 1.43 and then 10 to the ninth, like that. That is still scientific notation. Does that make sense? It's just the preference of re removing the X symbol for multiplication and using the parentheses to do it. Um, if you've ever worked on a TI-83 or even those small handheld TI-30s or whatever, like the red ones uh, or that gray one, uh, if you type in something that's a very, very large number, you're going to get like 1.43 and then it'll put a capital E, and then 9 that way. Does that make sense? Have you seen that before? Yeah. Okay. That means scientific notation. Some of them will use times 10, just depending on the coding of those calculators. But that's, those are all uh, equivalent formats of that number. Okay. What do I write the next one as? Uh, 2.3 times 10 to the 10. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to move that decimal from here to there, okay? And we want to make sure, so we want to make sure our decimal is between the two non-zero, the first two non-zero numbers. And then you keep writing, so because there is a 4 there, I need to have that 4 there. Does that make sense? If I just write it as 2.3 times 10 to the 6, I'm cutting off a very large amount. That 4 contributes uh, to that amount. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if I just go 2.3... Uh, times 10 to the 6, that represents the number 2,300,000, and I've cut off 40,000 um, whatevers, okay, whatever we're talking about there, okay. Uh, what about the next one? Yeah. So here, this one, 1. 1.4 times 10 to the 3rd, it's actually more tedious to write a number like 1,400 as 1. 1.4 times 10 to the 3rd, right? So there are maybe better ways instead of scientific notation so to write that one. Uh, what about the next one? Good. 3.2 times 10. So negative 9. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it puts a decimal right there. We're good to go. Okay. Um, next one. And then the next one. Uh, <laughs> All right. So I feel comfortable with that? Yeah. All right. So go the other way then. Okay. Okay. How many? So just answer this question. How many zeros will I have on this one? Nine. Seven. Wait, I'm sorry, huh? I'll have seven zeros. I move it nine spots. 
But these, when I move with those two, then I have seven placeholders that I need to put in, right? Uh, this one. How many zeros before I see, so four zeros, and then my seven and a one, okay? Here's, here's the benefit of this, guys. If I were to write this number, eight, three, zero, 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 so that's 83 million, and I ask you to multiply it by two million, would you want to do that, like, third grade, put my zero down, multiply all my stuff through, and do all that? Would you want to do that and then add those things up? No, wouldn't you rather rewrite this as 8.3 times 10 to the 7th? And this as 2 times 10 to the 6th? Does that make sense? Okay. What's 8.3 times 2? Uh, 16.6. Okay. Then, okay, so here's the idea of what this means. We're taking 8.3 times 2, but we've got the 10 to the 7th and the 10 to the 6th still, right? What's 10 to the 7th really mean? Right, 7 times, right? And 10 to the 6th means that 6 times, right? So how many 10 times 10s would you really have? If I wrote the 7 out and then multiplied by the 6 written out, there would be a total of 13. So why don't you rather multiply 8.3 and 2 and then add that 7 and 6 to get what 83 million times 2 million is? 16.6 times 10 to the 13th is that value. So that's, that's where this is going, and that's the benefit of scientific notation. Yes. All right. Um, and, and I think, guys, so that, that's, the, that's why I teach the way I 